positivity, motivation, never settle for average. You know, we do it over here. I was meditating on some thoughts I had and yeah, I tell you guys from time to time, I like to unplug and kind of reflect on where I'm at in life and where I want to physically be at in life as far as in the in the material, you know, in this realm. Spiritually, I could be there and in spirit, I'm already there. But when you're hustling in the fourth dimension, what you live in spiritual sometimes may not exactly be what you see in the physical or the material. And the thing is, is not to get caught up in the material because in, in spirit you are perfection. And that perfection is what allows you to manifest what you see in material. Material is not perfection. Material is it's basically perception of what others perceive of you. But in spiritual, you are perfection because you are a reflection of God, which is perfection. So when you say, hey, I'm perfect, in spirit, you are perfect. But in material, you may appear to be flawed because material is flawed. Material is what man has bastardized and made an attempt to control, manipulate, and empower himself over others. And in God's law and spiritual, we are each governed on the self. We're not controlled by any man. So when you look at whether it's the government whether it's the public school system or these corporations to give you something when you bow down and commit that adultery, when you look at something and you ask for it to empower you outside yourself, you are in total confliction with your true spirit. And that's why a lot of times you feel like you're unhappy, you're depressed, you're miserable because you're not operating within the spirit. And I know for some, this might be a little um, hard to uh, swallow. They don't, you know, people like, oh man, here we go. But I speak from my heart and I don't practice what I say before I come up here and say it in, in my office or I don't um, you know look for something to uh, repeat that makes it seem like I'm you know smarter than most I just speak from the heart and let it come from from within and uh, you know I have a I have a, a spiritual brother who enlightens me on a lot of things when sometimes I feel like maybe my my uh, foundation is, uh, is is maybe swayed or in doubt, and I have to come back and 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 let whatever those thoughts flow through my 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 conscious like the river, so that I can get back to my state of being, which is the truth, and. Whether it was you know, thousands of years ago or yesterday, it's always been those <clears throat> of um, a certain a certain class goal to control those of another class and to create that separation, to divide and conquer, and. Here you have it, you know, this, this gentleman right here um, is talking about it. If I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness. 
and I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree. V. So I'd set about however necessary to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve. Do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old, I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies, and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves, until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions, just let those run wild. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing, I'd have judges promoting pornography, Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who want it until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what will you bet? I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. Now, for those who don't know, um, that was Paul Harvey. And this is what Wikipedia has to say about um, Mr. Harvey. He was an American radio broadcaster for ABC News Radio. He broadcast news and comment on mornings and middays, on weekdays, and at noon on Saturdays, and also his famous Rest of the Story segments. From 1951 to 2008, his programs reached as many as 24 million people per week. Paul Harvey News was carried on 1,200 radio stations on 400 American forces network stations and in 1300 newspapers um harvey associated with various congregations of different denominations he and his wife regularly attended the camelback adventist church in scottsdale arizona during his winters there he often quoted the adventist pioneer ellen g white in his broadcast and received the golden microphone award for his professionalism and graciousness in dealing with the church he was also active with a small Plymouth Brethren meeting in Maywood, Illinois, called the Woodside Bible Chapter. One of the greatest books ever written was the Bible. Even if you're not religious, you read the Bible, and when you read it from an esoteric perspective and you look at the life lessons, the stories, you can learn a lot about spirituality, purpose, faith, and it goes beyond just going to a church to worship. You are the church, you are the temple, you are the truth. 
And the stories, a lot of them are allegories that talk about levels of consciousness and spirituality and conversations we have in our in our conscious, thoughts we have in our subconscious, things that elevate us to a higher level of being. And a lot of the texts that have been removed, I believe would, would even transcend what they're trying to do with AI technology and a lot of this other stuff because you would you would know about that that spiritual side which is not anything they want to teach or or share and you can't I don't even know if you could really teach it. It's something you have to feel. I mean I had my spiritual awakening in prison and it kind of took me on a whole nother journey and I'm not saying I read the Bible every day or I can recite the Bible, but there are scriptures that I've read in the Bible and that have been shared with me that allow me to free myself from a lot of the material things that seem to anchor me to this world. And the Bible was one of the first things they wanted to destroy when they want to conquer man. And it's also been used, been used to manipulate man for those who don't understand its esoteric meaning. And so not to say that, you know, as people say, well, they used it to, to do this and to do that. And it's, there were wars. There were a lot of wars. There were a lot of uh, death behind principles that people use in the Bible for purposes, but doesn't, it, it, that was man's use of those principles to empower himself. It wasn't necessarily the word because the word can be used to elevate those who are seeking a higher consciousness. And I'm not trying to be a preacher or somebody because I haven't studied at that level. And a preacher is not anybody who has any more authority than you. If you can read, if you can meditate, you can read the Bible and you can elevate yourself. You don't have to go and give anybody any tidings. You tied yourself. That's how I feel. I mean, I'm not knocking those who feel they have to go to a temple, but my temple is, is, is here. And that's how I was able to get to where I'm at in life. And just listening to some of the things that just come to me, you know, that I'm, when I'm seeking things from a, a higher conscious, you know, this, 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 uh, Paul Harvey, it popped up on my feed. And so the spirit is always seeking. And, and when you feel you're most desperate, it, it feeds you that which you're, which you, you, you feel you need the most to bring you up. And so hopefully this video will bring you up will make you feel better about yourself. Um, maybe if you haven't been going to church, you can go there because there is good. I mean, there's power in, in prayer. But know that you can pray with self and your prayers will be answered. We are all dealing with a lot of really low frequency vibrations that are trying to lower our higher consciousness. And that's another key way of control. So we have to break free from that. And uh, I feel that a lot of those who so-called are, you know, uh, people of God have, you know, um, kind of led the masses down a path of of just ill fate and in order to come out of that darkness, you have to walk into the light. And so if you have to go, you know, purchase you a Bible and, and open the scripture and reflect, it, it will make you, it will, it, it, it communicates to each one of us differently. And for myself, I, I, like I said, I'm not somebody who can quote the Bible or I read a bunch of scriptures. I just, um, from time to time, I reflect on different things I've heard. And I have, like I said, somebody that shares things with me. But a lot of time, 
other uh, conduits speak to me, and I know that a key a, a key to our elevation of self is belief in self and knowing that there's a higher spirit and the higher spirit is within us because we are a collective consciousness. And if you destroy that collective consciousness and you can whittle humankind down to where there is no belief, then you've lost all hope for humanity and we got to get back to that. And that's one of the reasons why I, I say some of the stuff I say on my videos to kind of make people think, you know, I did a video the other day about, uh, do I have to act like a, you know, an end to get, get views. And I only did that just to, to be a smart ass, you know, um, because what, you know, man feeds into what, you know, the people feed into is a distraction. And it, that distraction keeps you in a, a mental bondage into a mental slavery. And that slavery is only through your consent. That mental bondage is only through your consent. It's not a real slavery, a real mental bondage. It's a, it's a, a, a concept that you feel has control over you when you really have control over it because those are your thoughts, you know, unless you're in a position where you're actually in a cage or somebody has you in the physical, you know, slavery, which is a very sad situation. But, um, having experienced captivity and now having freedom, and when I think about my low points out here, when I'm, you know, maybe thinking about something material that really doesn't have any significance, I have to always reflect back and think like. Who is self and where do I see self in a spiritual sense rather than in a material sense? If that makes any sense to you. So Big Kirk 916, sharing some game, subscribe, share the channel, and uh, go to bigkirk916.com. Are you tired of smelling funky? Have you lost your ad? Go to BigKirkNet16.com Lockdown's over. Get your yard time in. Kid. Exclusive. Officially, I only got one real spanking my entire life. My mom did the best a 14-year-old could do, raising me with love and instilling values that will last a lifetime. I was a straight-A student and lived to make her happy. So how did I go astray? A horrible stepdad that stole my self-worth and invoked fear turned me into a person that I struggled to overcome. From skateboarding to selling drugs, gang-banging the juvenile hall, I got caught the same way many young promising men get caught up. I struggled to find my identity, getting mixed up in shootouts, crime, and the adult entertainment industry. This roller coaster continued as I juggled college, hustling, and Hollywood, eventually catching a federal bank robbery case. I found redemption in prison while serving a 120 month federal sentence and came out a man on a mission. I became a social media influencer with over half a billion views on YouTube and a life coach mentoring people all over the world. This is my journey against all odds.